welcome tonight on a Thursday evening. We're thrilled that you decided to join us here. We've been looking forward to this event with Jenny Keller. We're really happy to have her and celebrate her, her new book out. Um, she will be signing after the event, so you're welcome to purchase it before or after. It doesn't really matter. She'll be happy to sign it for you. So let's um, welcome Jenny Keller. Hi, I'm Jenny. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm really excited that you guys are here. I thought that I would read the intro of my book first um, because I feel like it really explains kind of how I got you know, to this point. Um, and then I'll take whatever questions you might have. Maybe you already have the book and you have questions about a recipe or party planning, whatever it is. Um, and then we'll, we'll sign your books. Just to warn you, my children are probably going to come in like right as I'm halfway through this. But. I'm from here. I'm from Marysville. Yeah. Yeah. I, I um, was born in Marysville and I um, went to college in Bellingham. I should have gone to like New York or somewhere fun because I knew I wanted to end up here. But yeah, I'm a Washington girl. I love it here. It's beautiful. Okay. I know this inside now and I'll probably stumble over my words, but bear with me. As I steered a rented Yukon brimming with fragile cookies, cupcakes, cakes, and cake pops through Los Angeles, I marveled at how quickly my life had changed. I was just another mom, happily living with my husband and two kids in a Seattle suburb. In my spare time, I loved stretching my creative muscles by putting together dessert tables. There was something incredibly fulfilling about creating theme tables of sweet treats for my children's birthday parties and holidays. I picked up baking assignments from people who heard, who heard about my dessert tables from friends here or made a wedding cake there. But now, here I was, driving a truck full of desserts to Tori Spelling's house for a book photo shoot, all because of a cookie. When my beautiful daughter, Allie, was born, I fell deep under the spell that only a new baby can cast. Suddenly, the coffee shop my husband Dan and I owned wasn't my first priority. Six months after Allie was born, my husband and I sold our business so that I could stay home. But before long, the entrepreneur in me found the daily grind of bass, laundry, grocery shopping, and dinner planning a bit boring. I needed a creative outlet to prevent myself from losing Jenny Keller to Allie's mommy. In October of 2006, Dan handed me a cookbook called The Greatest Sugar Cookies Ever. He loved baking with his mom when he was growing up and thought it might be something fun for Allie and I to do together. Granted, baby Allie was only 10 months old at the time, but still, she could monitor the sugar cookie baking from her high chair. So a few days later, we gave The Greatest Sugar Cookies Ever a shot. Being a self-taught baker, let's just say these were not the greatest sugar cookies ever. With sugar cookies on the brain, I asked my mother-in-law for her time-tested recipe. These actually were the greatest sugar cookies ever. Melt in your mouth soft. In no time, I was a woman obsessed. That October, I baked dozens of my version of the family recipe and created pumpkin-shaped sugar cookies, handing them out to family and friends. They were a hit. Two weeks after Christmas, my sweet baby girl turned one. Allie was fascinated with Baby Einstein, so I built her birthday party around that theme. In preparation, I bought every Baby Einstein character I could find, gathered every ounce of primary colored party loot, and found someone who could make custom Baby Einstein candy bar wrappers. Without realizing it, I had created my first dessert table, and it turned out that cobbling these elements together in a vibrant way was just as fun as baking. After that, I was constantly on the prowl for an excuse to bake themed desserts. The sugar cookies were joined by cupcakes, cakes, and cake pops, the newest dessert on the scene at the time. But even with these additions to my repertoire, my decorated sugar cookies were still everybody's favorite. My family and friends began to affectionately call them Jenny cookies. I started a blog called The Story of Us, which documented our, littles fam our little family's day-to-day -day activities, outings, and milestones. Not surprisingly, pictures of my cookies and desserts overtook everything else and soon required their own blog. The Jenny Cookies blog was born. As the months passed, the parties got more extravagant and dessert tables became my signature. I scoured flea markets and estate sales, antique shops and secondhand stores for clever props, and I took it upon myself to ensure that every single holiday, big or small, made an impression on my kids. St. Patrick's Day means green beer for most people, but Allie and her brother Hudson spent it in the park eating shamrock-shaped sugar cookies, rainbow cupcakes and cake pops placed in a bed of Lucky Charms while searching for a hidden pot of gold treasure. Halloween wasn't just trick-or-treating around the neighborhood. It meant inviting our closest friends and family for a celebration centered around caramel apples, caramel corn, 
pumpkin-shaped cake pops and cake with fondant spiders dangling from the sides. Rather than battling it out with the older kids at the local Easter egg hunt, we had friends over to dye eggs while nibbling Easter basket cupcakes and egg-shaped sugar cookies. The kids had a blast at these parties, but I'm not sure they had half as much fun enjoying them as I did creating them. I got a rush of excitement every time Target or Michael set up a new display. It meant another holiday was just around the corner. I started stashing away Rubbermaid containers with goodies and supplies for future, for future parties, just in case I needed to throw an end of summer camp out or back to school bash. Of course, neither of my kids were actually in school yet, but hey, it's always good to be prepared. When I wasn't plotting my next party, I began taking custom orders. My clients consisted of friends and friends of friends, people who tasted my sugar cookies at a friend's baby shower, or who sampled a cake pop at a child's birthday party. The orders were small, a few sugar cookie orders or a few dozen cupcakes. I had no intention of marketing myself as a baker, but I happily obliged whenever someone asked. Then a funny thing happened. More and more people began reading my blog and following my Jenny Cookies Facebook page. My children's parties were featured on top party sites like Amy Atlas, Kara's Party Ideas, Hostess with the Mostess, and an unexpected viral cycle began. With more publicity came more orders. I began making cookies and dessert tables for major corporations such as Daisy Penny, Microsoft, Neiman Marcus. Based on demand, I started teaching occasional sold out cookie classes, demonstrating how to make and design Jenny cookies. Every now and then I considered opening a shop, but the truth is I didn't want to go into business. I wanted to be a stay at home mom and make my confections on my own time. I wanted to have my cookie and eat it too. Then in 2010, my friend Kennedy attended a signing for Tori Spelling's latest book where she gave the actress some of my cookies. Ten minutes after receiving them, Tori tweeted to thank me for the cookies. I couldn't believe it. A couple weeks later, Tori asked if I'd make a dessert table for her party planning book, Celebratory. And just like that, I had my first celebrity client. With a few days notice, I did a much, as much preparation for the dessert table shoot at Tori's house as I could. Running on almost no sleep, I arrived in Los Angeles from Seattle with a suitcase of, full of painstakingly packed cookies and supplies. I sped to the local Target to purchase a KitchenAid. Once back at the house I had rented, I put the mixer to immediate use, making cakes, cake pops, and even more cookies until the wee hours. Harried, I had an impromptu meeting with Tori the next day to pick out a desk, chairs, and chalkboards to stage at the dessert table with a classroom theme. Then it was back to my little kitchen to decorate and bake some more. I finished at 7 a.m. and within the hour I was packing up the Yukon for the shoot. My dessert tables were featured in Celebratory. Before long I was doing dessert tables for other celebrities including Tiffany Thiessen, Lisa Renna and Harry Hamlin, The Bachelorette's Trista Sutter and The Bachelor's Jason Mesnick. My dessert tables were requested at the Emmy Awards and featured in magazines. Although my unexpected business blossomed in ways I never expected, a lot remains the same. I bake in my home kitchen with kids running around. I still consider myself a mom first and a baker second. And most of all, more than 50,000 cookies and hundreds of dessert tables later, I still get a thrill every time an idea for the next creation pops into my head. Thank you. Thank you. So that's kind of how I got my start in a nutshell. That's something people always want to know when I'm down in LA, like how did you, you know, even even the people in LA, how did they find you in Seattle? So that's why I wrote that in introduction. But I would love to answer any questions you guys might have. Do you still do your I haven't done a cookie class for a while. I know, I do need to. I will. Maybe it's just been a busy, it's been kind of busy, but we will. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How would you pack something like that? Or would you put more sugar in it to make it stick? So these I actually made just this morning and was like literally icing them at three o'clock. So they're really, I was telling Heather that here, that they hadn't even had a chance to like crust before I had to bring them. So um, Becky actually asked, asked that too. I pack everything in like bakery boxes. So they're just flat. Somebody really needs to create a, a box for cookies because like some way to stack, because think of how tall like a box is and you fill it with cookies and it's full and there's all this dead space. But with cupcakes, you know, you can fill it and it's super full. But um, typically this does, it'll like crust after a few hours. It just hasn't had a chance yet. 
I don't. I don't ship. So you went to Tori Scully's and created them there? There, yep. Yeah, so my girlfriend went to the signing. She had said, um, I'm going to the signing and I really think you should make cookies for her. And I thought, are you kidding me? She's going to throw them in the garbage can. You know, I'm going to take all that time and make all those cookies. Who would eat them, you know? And sure enough, she did. And so when she originally asked if I would do things for her party, she I assumed she thought I lived there, you know? But I obviously didn't, so... <laughs> But I thought, this is, this is an opportunity, you know, I should go. And so I rented a, a vacation rental and, like, literally bought a KitchenAid there. So I had, I could do it. And it turned out, it turned out. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Okay, how do you get your cake pops to stay on the pop? Because every time I try to make them, obviously you know what you're doing. But I feel like they were always falling off. So if you, like, lift that up and throw it around, we'll Yes. So um, in the book, I have like a step-by-step -step of the cake pops so you can kind of see how to roll it out. But what I do first is when I have my bowl of melted chocolate, I'll take the cake pop stick and just dip it down in the chocolate, like literally less than a centimeter and put it down into the ball of cake. And so then that dries and kind of like hardens it on and then go back and dip. I know. The first time I made them, it was, it was a disaster. So... It's just the more you bake stuff, the more tips you get. Do you hand farm them yourself or do you actually use the whole bottle? I do them myself. Yeah, I, I've been contacted by a, a company that, it's like a cake ball roller, like you put it all in and I feel like I've gotten so quick at rolling them. It almost seems like more time. Um, my trick is that I use a tablespoon and so as I, like I have my bowl of the mix and then I'll take my tablespoon and scoop it out so they're all the same size. But other than that, just roll away. Any other questions? So I'll ask another okay. <laughs> I love the cake pops. They were just really great. Thank and you. Everybody should have one of them. You should. Um, how did you get the, the sugar on it and so it's uniform? And how do you get them to stand up to flatten the rock? Nope. So once you take your tablespoon, roll it all out, and then I'll just put them back on like a cookie sheet, you know, and put them in my refrigerator for like maybe an hour or longer. It's just that the, the, the colder they get, you need to remember that for when you take them back out. Because if, you, if they're really, really cold and you put them in the hot or melted chocolate, they'll crack. So that's some, have you ever had that happen? It's so it's the worst when it's like an owl shaped, you know, that you've sat there and put eyes on and ears and then it cracks and you're like, really? It took me like 10 minutes to make one of these. But um, you don't want them to be room temperature. So I always say like an hour is a good amount of time. But um, you'll dip them in your chocolate and then I have a whole system. Like I have a big piece of styrofoam that like I get everything on in your bowl of chocolate and then I'll have a bowl of the sprinkles with a spoon. So I can dip like four or five at a time while the chocolate's kind of a little bit hardening and then sprinkle them and then lay them to dry. With a spoon, like so the sprinkles are in a bowl, not in a jar, does that make sense? And then a spoon and then you just hold it over the bowl and so it all goes back into the bowl. Can you picture it? <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Well, I do. I mean, I pick them up at, you know, like estate sales, um, antique stores. I was just talking to Becky. It's really hard to find cake plates anymore. I mean, if you find it, it's like, woo, you know, it's a treasure. Um, this, the green one you can buy. That's uh, made by a company in Ohio, and they come in pink and green and blue and red. I mean, they make beautiful glass. But some of these, like the vintage, if you really want one, it's, you may as well just look on eBay and pay a million dollars, but I use them over, they're so pretty, I have cake plates all over my house. Like I have one next to my sink with my soap on it, you know, and I mean, anywhere, they're so pretty, you can use them, or they're just beautiful to have for food, you know, when you're trying to display food for an event, not just dessert. So, I, you can never have enough cake plates. <laughs> I'm gonna start my own cake plate line, that's my, that's my goal, truly. <laughs> Like, I would love that because it's so hard to find them and everybody wants them. They're always saying, where do you get the cake plates? Where do you get the cake plates? And Bring your cake to bed. Yes. It makes everything look so special. It does. You really can. Yes, totally. It's, 
I always say it's all about presentation. Like everything. I'm a sucker for cute packaging. You know, I'll buy it at the store if it's packaged cute. But I mean, the bonus about all the recipes in my book are they look really pretty, but they actually taste really good too. And they are, I mean, the, the cakes are literally their cake mix. It's just doctoring them up. And, you know, I, I mean, as a mom, I don't have time to like grate carrots and, you know, do all that for, for a carrot cake plus make a whole table. Like if you're only going to do the one cake, it's fine. But when you want to do a whole table of treats, it's just impossible to make all of it from scratch. And when I took a, um, I took a Wilton cake course. I don't have any like pastry background or anything. And I remember my cake instructor saying, why would you make it from scratch? Like it's practically the same. But then you're gonna, I know, you're gonna get people that, that like, it from, like it from scratch. Try a cupcake. They're good. <laughs> They're... Oh, okay, okay. Yes. I feel like the cupcakes are going out. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, well, I see the shops popping up and I'm thinking, like, that's, but then I also thought that about espresso stands and you still see those, you know? Cupcakes will always be around because think of kids' birthday parties, you're always going to have cupcakes. Um, what I think would be fun at different parties, like for our 4th of July party, I was thinking it'd be really fun to like have an outdoor movie and instead of doing a whole dessert table, like, let's do a popcorn bar, you know, where it's just like, We'll pop popcorn and have a whole bunch of different toppings, you know, and, and make your own popcorn. Or like for my son's birthday, we're going to do a Huck Finn Tom Sawyer. So I'm like, why don't we make a trail mix bar with all kinds of different toppings? And, you know, the kids can just mix up all their favorite Cheerios and M&Ms or whatever their nuts, whatever they are. Um, you also, I think pie is going to make its way in. Little mini pies. Yeah. But I mean, the cookies and the cupcakes are always going to be around. Cake pops are kind of trendy. If you were picking one thing, I would think. Plus, they're kind of hard. But everybody loves the cake pops. They're always the first to go. So we're doing an aviator party. Yes. Like aviator. Yeah. It's like on the spot. Well, of course you have to do like sugar cookies. I guess when I do a party and I have a theme, it's like I know I'm going to do a cake pop, a cupcake, a cookie. Yes, exactly. You know, and so it's just finding like a cookie cutter to match. I don't love shaping cake pops into airplanes, you know, so I'd rather just... I mean, once in a while, it's really, like I did a strawberry party last weekend, and I made those, I did make the cake pops into strawberries, um, and those weren't hard. That was just like rolling them and kind of giving them a tip at the bottom, and they turned out darling, but like I said, I did the owl one time, and that was, that was a lot of work, you know, to do all that. Um, in my book, I did um, a farm party, and it was like just as simple to like dip a white, a white cake pop and just draw some black spots on, and you knew it looked like a cow but you didn't spend your whole evening like drawing cow face on, you know? But there's quite a bit of things you can do. I think it's just like pulling colors, you know, shaping your sugar cookies like that, you know, maybe incorporating some of that stuff into your decorations. Does that help? Okay. I'll be thinking of aviator stuff now all night long. <laughs> yes? This is just a plug, but we do have a cake plate on sale for 40% off. <laughs> they have a cake plate. <laughs> yes? So I have a, a cake baking business, and um, I, I specialize though in what I can make cakes look like or what I can make that sugar to put on top of the cake to make it look like something. And I always have a really hard time with the baking part of it, but I feel like people would be disappointed if I used a box mix. Has anybody ever said to you, this tastes just like Duncan Hines or something? And Never. Really? Okay. Because literally up until I did the book, nobody knew. Yeah. But it was like, well, when we decided like the concept of the book, right. it was like, well, I mean, I do have those scratch, like the carrot cake, you know? But it take, I truly don't do that often when I'm doing a whole table. And I think the reason why I started with the cake mixes was because I was going to California and having to do things really quickly. Um, I don't like to leave for very long, so I'll go I mean, even to leave on a Thursday for a Saturday party is, is long for me, um, but I'll work like around the clock so I don't have to leave my kids for very long. Um, and so it just feels faster, but like I add pudding to mine and I do extra eggs and I mean, it's not healthy, but, <laughs> but that's, I mean, would it taste good if it, you know, what's the point if you're going to have dessert, you know? Yeah. Yes. 
Um, well, a woman contacted me a couple years ago and said, "Have I'm you know so and so from this you know literary agency, and have you ever thought about writing a book?" She said, "I saw your daughter's Mary Poppins party, and I just loved it, and I think it would be." beautiful like have you ever thought about it and I was totally caught off guard I mean literally my kids are like running through the house and I'm like you guys be quiet you know and um, I said yeah I mean I guess you know what are you thinking and she just said well you'd have to figure out like what your concept would be and I mean really it could be anything and I just finished the book with Tori so it couldn't be a party book because it was really uh, very close to what she had just done um, and we went back and forth like we thought maybe it would be like a cookie book you know where like there's the Bakerella cake pops and she just shows you how to do all the different kinds and I thought well I could just do cookies you know you could just go through and that's the one you know recipe and then show how to decorate it but we we ended up doing dessert tables and so you write a whole proposal that's like writing a college paper with all these different things you have to have like comparative titles and how that book sold and how it's different than yours and then your book agent takes it to a publisher and they buy it. So um, we published with Page Street, which is a newer publishing company, and um, you know they they can they change your proposal. Like my original proposal had 25 tables with five desserts in each, and they knew better than I did that I didn't really want to do 25 tables. I mean, 10 alone was was a lot of work. And then we shot the whole book in six weeks, so it was a lot of baking and shooting, you know, and writing. But did you shoot everything at the new farmhouse? I did most of it at my house. Um, we have five acres, so we just kind of made it work in different areas. Everything in the book is there except for the fall table we did at a local pumpkin patch, and then we did the Christmas table at a tree farm down the street. So other than that, it was all on the farm. Yes? I haven't done anything specifically for her. I um, saw her two weeks ago. Um, I think she just has a lot going on and she has a new show coming out. So I haven't done any of her kids' birthday parties or anything recently, but she hasn't been doing a lot of big things anyway. So she knows it's, it's not really worth it for me to go down unless, you know, to leave. She knows I don't want to leave my family and unless it's going to be something, I guess, worth my while. Sony in the back, yes. What was your favorite dessert table or party that you've ever done? Um, probably my son's farm party a couple years ago. We just, we had it at, um, it was actually the place where we shot the fall table in the book and they have this, I mean, it. if you saw it, you would think that party was never there, you know? I mean, because it was this big barn with nothing in there but like two or three picnic tables and it just turned out so cute. I mean, just the kids loved it, and you know, everybody. I mean, Hudson was three, you know, so he's wearing like little short all overalls, and there were chickens and goats, and all. I mean, it was just we had corn on the cob and watermelon. It was just really classic. But I did love my daughter's Mary Poppins party too, because I love Mary Poppins. That was I was telling one of the girls earlier, like when your kids are little, pick the themes that you like, because once they turn like eight or nine, they don't want those those parties anymore. My daughter this year was like gung-ho on we're having a kitten party. And I'm like, kittens, you know, really? And I probably named off like 10 other things. And she's like, no, mom, cats. So <laughs> we had a kitten party, and it actually turned out way cuter than I thought it was going to be. But um, yeah, so pick them early. When you <laughs> I have a couple on my list still. So I have a couple more years with Hudson before he's like, you know, I want Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. <laughs> I always say with the, with, I know, here's what you do. Um, I would always do like the character stuff for like their, because their birthdays never fall on their party day. Yeah. And so um, on their actual birthday, I'll get like the princess plates and all that, you know, for their family dinner or their breakfast or something. And then you don't have to have all the commercial stuff. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you like to do at Christmas? What's your specialty? Christmas, we always make fudge. Um, Usually by Christmas, I'm like totally burnt out from all of it. You know, I'm like, I just want to relax. But we always do sugar cookies. We always do fudge. Um, everybody in my family is obsessed with the Ritz crackers that you um, sandwich peanut butter in between and then you dip them in chocolate. I mean, they're the most simple dessert. And every time somebody eats one of those, if you like peanut butter, they're just like, what are these? And they're so easy. But um, we make snowball cookies. 
but nothing really hard. It's all just quick and fast and, you know. We do. Every year I do it, I'm like, I'm done doing this. Like, this is so much work, you know? But, um, and because I think a lot of people bake at Christmas, so you're getting a whole bunch of different yeah. stuff, and you've, I hate it. I hate to see it go to waste after you've done all that work. But, um, yeah, just think you, there's so many cute packaging items out there now. Martha Stewart makes really cute stuff. Um, also, it's just cute to grab, like, a tray that you can just give them and just put it on their cute. Not, I hate it when it's, like, a tray full of, every single dessert like piled on top of each other. But it, I mean, you can put it on one tray, just like, you know, separate it a little bit. Yes, Becky. Okay, do you have like a favorite like baking supply store around here that's not like Michael's or Joanne's or something like that? Like something that like yes. the average person would want to know? I go to Dawn's Candy and Cake in Bothell. Um, she's so sweet and they have all kinds of stuff. Um, she can order you probably anything you need. I mean, of course, you can like run to the Michaels or Joanne Fabrics for some of the basic stuff. I also order a lot online. Um, I found a website called GYGI that I order a lot of stuff from, like the melting chocolates, the candy oils. Um, most recently, I found a website called Websteranter, like Restauranter, but with a W. And I found, um, I'm always finding new things, just like the disposable icing bags, like at, at Michael's or one of those craft stores, you get like 100 bags and it's like $20. It was $5 <laughs> and it's just on a roll. Yeah, so I ordered those. Websteranter? I might be saying it wrong. Maybe it's just Websteran. It's like restaurant with a W. Just Google it. Um, G-Y-G-I. Yeah. Okay. Because my daughter was into that. Yeah. So we have a little men there, you know. Oh yeah. Anyway, so I made the cake and I froze it and I stacked it and then kind of had the wall up. Right. And then to, to use the chocolate, this is getting to my question. Yeah. I poured it over the top and then there were gaps. And I poured more. Right. And then the back fell off. Oh no. And then I got um, That's not good. Chinese chopsticks and put it back up and oh, no. barbecue skewers and stuck it in. Yeah. It was absolutely a disaster. How do you get your chocolate to just harden beautifully? Or is it not real chocolate? Or how do, how do you, what do you, is there a technique for that? Um, I'm picky about what kind of chocolate. I love, I'm not going to say it right, guitar chocolates that you can get at the GYGI or anywhere online. But I like the Wilton candy melts. If you've ever used them, they're just like so hard and clumpy and they're not very good. Also, there's Merkins, which don't harden as well. But I haven't ever had a problem with this. Like they come just in white vanilla flavor and you can color them whatever color. Is it real chocolate, guitar, or is it a guitar? They have, um, they have chocolate. No, it's real chocolate. They have all different kinds, but I like their vanilla flavor one. That's the one I use most commonly. And actually I found it at like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Winco. Yes. Winco. One time I was in their bulk section, probably picking out all the yellow candies for some yellow party, and I saw their can't. It says vanilla melties, and I'm like, I should just try these. And that's what they are. Turns out, so I'm like sending all my girlfriends to Winco for, you know, their candy melts. But I'm like, they melt so much better and smooth because the Wilton kind. If you do have to use Wilton, you just have to add a, a, a bunch of vegetable oil to it, and it just. Um, it smooths it out, but then you feel like, how gross is this? You're just literally dumping oil into it. So you should try it. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, we can sign. Thank you so much for coming.